G'day everyone and welcome to this PsyQ special edition. We were recently super lucky to meet one of my science communication heroes, Matt Kirshen, on the set of The Jim Jeffrey Show, where Matt works as a writer. Matt's also the host of Probably Science, the hilarious science podcast, you should check it out. We spoke to Matt about the importance of being British, being a scientist and being ridiculous. I hope you enjoy. Hi, and welcome to the show. I'm here with Matt Kirshen, who's the co-host of Probably Science Podcast and also a writer on The Jim Jeffrey Show. Hey, how's thanks, it going? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. You're one of the rare people that manages to successfully combine comedy and science. So what inspired you to start the Probably Science Podcast? I don't know about successfully. Let's not get <laughs> carried away. But uh, so I'm a, co I'm a comedian. That's my job. I also have a mathematics degree. So that's what I... S from Cambridge? Yeah, that's where it's from. So I was doing that when, like, that's what I was doing when I started doing stand-up. I started it as a student, and then I, I kind of left any of the kind of science-y, maths -y world behind me for a long time. I was just doing straight stand-up, and then I started to have this idea that, you know, maybe I could do this, a podcast that combined the two, and within a week, I bumped into two other comics who had a science background. So, like, Andy, who's still my co-host to this day, who was an engineer, and then Brooks, who was our co third co-host until he went off to New York and was on SNL. Uh, it's kind of hard to do both at the same time, but he was a biomedical technician. So suddenly I knew these three comics, or sorry, three including me. I knew me. <laughs> uh, and I just, you just realized there was, there was no one doing like a topical science podcast that was funny. Like there were like topical news funny podcasts. There were some science-y podcasts that were funny, but no one was sort of combining the two. No one was doing, here's what happened this week, but with comedians blagging their way through we put the probably in there for a reason because yeah. we it's probably science yeah we get what, what's interesting is we have these this listenership of people who found us because we're a comedy show and so they like all the you know that they came and they wanted a comedy show that was sort of more on the science side but also we have real scientists who listen to the show which is lovely but also means that they write in with the corrections like hey yeah this um yeah, so I'm a, I'm a professor of this, and <laughs> you know, you are very wrong. <laughs> like, but, we know it's okay. Yeah, no, we we actively encourage that. Every episode, we say like email questions, comments, and clarifications. Tell us where we're wrong. Get it right for us, and they do. They're amazing. So why do you think that you're pretty much the first and only comedy show that talks about science? Why do you I think those two things don't mesh? So I much? don't know. I think they do. I think they're they're definitely. We're not the only comedy show that's talking about science. I think we're the only topical one. Because there's, you know, there's people like Infinite Monkey Cage with uh, Robin Ince and Brian Cox. And they're, you know, that's a comedy show. And that's, then they're hilarious. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, there, there is a melding of those two worlds. There's, you know, on both sides of the Atlantic, uh, there's Dara O'Brien as well, who's a great comedian. And he was a, I think, mathematical physicist. I think that was his degree. But he's a super smart guy. Uh, and he, yeah, he does... So th th there is a blending between the worlds. You know, there are scientists who are funny and there are comedians who are scientifically minded. There is a sciencey element towards putting together jokes and... A formula and a, yeah, yeah, an approach. Yeah. There's definitely an approach and definitely like a mindset. It's a similar idea of like joke writers like something that has lateral thinking but also is concise, is elegant. Mm. And, and mathematicians like that as well. I mean, mathematicians love an elegant proof or a really neat formula like just something that comes together perfectly and it, it takes leaps of logic to get there but when it all falls into place you go of course it couldn't have been anything else well, and that and that's what a good joke is as well once it's all these desperate ideas but when they when you find the perfect wording to combine them you're like yes it couldn't have been it couldn't have been another way around this is how it had to work so that means that as a mathematician you're uniquely placed to be a good comic yeah i do, i i think my my former supervisors would balk at me being called a mathematician <laughs> <laughs> me blagging my way through that degree but I, I think you know there are comedians there are so many different mindsets that make up being a comedian so many different ways that people have come to it but definitely there are definitely there's a subset of comics who have that kind of brain who work that way who, who jigsaw puzzle jokes in their head and like see it that way around and I think that's, that's how I come to putting together stuff now, do you see your podcast as entertainment, a way of, keep, like, you pick science as just a lens to entertain people, or do you see it a bit more seriously in that I have a responsibility to engage people in science? I, both. I think both, but we were, 
we had a discussion at the beginning because you have to pick on iTunes. You have to pick which category you go in, and we. I, I, Andy and I were both like, should we go into the science section? Should we go into the comedy section? And Brooks was like, comedy. We're yeah. going in the comedy section. We have no business being in the science section. Like, we do get the stories across, and we do try our best to be accurate. And I think we do go some way towards being one of the many people who are trying to make science more accessible. Like, as are you, and, yeah. you know, as are a hundred other people, and I'm sure some of the... Keep going. If you right? Want to, yeah. yeah, people watching this and people who people watching this are also fans of so we're we're a tiny proportion of the people i guess bringing comedy to the world oh, sorry bringing science rather to the world and ma- making it more accessible but i i, I never want to be high-minded enough to go like, yeah we are we are fulfilling a public <laughs> service we are doing an important duty here like we we are an entertainment show first and foremost but we're an entertainment show that tries to convey information that is interesting and important and fun in Smart, as everybody. yeah in in as accurate way as possible I, I, we definitely we don't we try not to mislead and we try to be accurate and we try to correct mistakes we make and we try to correct mistakes that the general population is making yeah so i like that you start an episode when you often have people with no or very little science background yeah maybe it ended in high school yeah but you get them to declare that up front yeah know? well we, we start so sometimes we have real scientists on the show and obviously those episodes are different but when we have comedians the first question we ask is what is your background in science because normally it starts with them going oh nothing I don't have any background and then you start them talking about well were there did you have to take classes as, at, at college for, extra, for credit or did you was there a teacher you particularly liked or did you blow stuff up in the woods when you were a kid <laughs> and, and nearly it's all, all science there's always something nearly always they go like oh yeah well I had to do psychology at college well that's a so- <laughs> it's a soft science but then you suddenly you know you suddenly yeah. find out or, or like, they're like it's no maths at Cambridge right? we'll accept it or, or they'll, they'll suddenly say that oh yeah I had this one physics teacher that I really liked and they'll start talking about something they remembered from that class when they were 16 and yeah. you know I love that. I think everyone does have those pe- some people sort of shut off that world early but then they realise oh no there were bits of it that were that I did once find accessible and I once really liked. And So I know you're about to go on the Jim Jeffries show as an on-screen talent. I'm just, yeah, I'm filming a little thing for the digital thing, hopefully. The, <laughs> well, digital, hopefully it'll go well. We'll be able to link to it in the description. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. So since we've only got you for a couple of minutes, let's do speed round. Speed round. All right. Um, you once said that uh, I'd like to point out that Koala Chlamydia has nothing to do with me. I'd hate for it to be the case that when you start typing in my name, Koala Chlamydia is the next thing that comes up. What is koala chlamydia and how can we help change your views on it? Thank you for further <laughs> boosting that up the Google ranks. <laughs> yeah, what was I that? I try to remember that was on a TV show a while back that it yeah. just came up that, that I was talking... It's a serious issue. Well, you're Australian. You're yes. aware of this as a problem, that that's the main... That, I mean, it's certainly the most prevalent STD amongst the koala community. Yes. You know, they've mostly escaped the other ones, but, that, <laughs> but they're mad yeah. for it. Yeah, I don't... What uh, I don't know is whether it is whether it's exactly the same or similar or wildly different to the human form. I Nor wonder if you I, can catch one from the other. I don't know, because that's the first thing you think species. when you hear that is How like, they get it? how do they get it? Who was it? It's one <laughs> of your people, because we don't have that animal, so... <laughs> to be fair, yeah, but it is interesting. Yeah. It was a, a either it, Australian kind of... Either it went koala species. to human or human to koala, but either way... <laughs> Something's going on. It's one of you. Science and religion. What's yeah. your religious background? Well, I was, there's a big truck going past in the background, but I was raised, I was raised kind of Jewish. Like I was raised loose, like I, Jewish upbringing, had the mitzvah, had all that stuff, but we were like twice a year. We, we, which is more important to you, science or religion? Well, certainly science. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, certainly I mean, science, that's the next podcast. We, we were the sort of family that was like no bacon in the home, but then we'd leave the house and eat bacon. Like that's, that's the level of Jewish like, Jewish people watching this right now will instantly know the category we're in. You're like, oh, yeah, we got it. Okay. Um, you are not an American citizen. Just I am like not. I'm not an American citizen. That is Do true. Do you have any great travel stories? Because it's a long flight. It's a long flight. Well, I do the flight. I'm, I'm, I'm a good traveler. Like, I, I now just get rocked to sleep instantly by a long-haul flight. I'm just out. Like, if you, if, you ever, if you ever find me struggling to nap, then just put me on a... $800 flight to London <laughs> and I'll be like like, like a light oh oh my god I'm a champion at it alright I've got three studies that I want to get your comment on go Quickly. for it 
Uh, a recent study from the University of Alabama and Mississippi found that female CEOs earn equal or more than men. True or false? True or false? Here's what I think. No, hang on, wait. I was about to say it might be true because it's such a small sample size. You would be but... correct. Good job. Okay, oh, yeah. cool. Speed round, number two. Uh, medical cannabis reduces pain and opioid use, and 91% of elderly pe- people would recommend medical cannabis to others. True or false? I think, we, I, think I read this one. I think it's true. You are exactly right. Yep. True. Cool. And um, older adults, uh, we often talk about ADHD being a young people's disease, yep. but it's actually older adults that are more easily distracted with irrelevant information. True or false? That has to be true. They're all true. That has to be true. Yeah. I've seen old people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Their brains just aren't as focused as they used to be. And I'm very unfocused, but yeah, I can't imagine what I'm going to be like in 30 years' time if I make it that far. I just all over the place. Well, thank you for everything that you're doing, Matt, to keep science interesting and to get people engaged. And you, and you. Thanks things. for coming down. Thanks for having me well, here. when you're in New York, you'll have to come into, into the studio. I would love to. It's not as nice as the Jim Jefferies said. I'm it's, to uh, it's nice to be out in California, isn't it? <laughs> this isn't bad for mid-afternoon as a Brit. This is quite exciting to me. Well, thanks for watching, Psyche. We'll see you next time. So make sure you check out Matt's podcast, Probably Science. Follow him on Twitter at Matt Kirshen. All the links are in the description below. Hi, everyone. I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ, and we know you don't want to miss an episode. So please click the subscribe button down below.